welcome to another edition of Tim's Vinyl Confessions. I'm Tim Durling, my co-host Matt Phillips. Hey guys. We're at Matt's again, and today we're going to talk about Queensryche, but it's not going to be your typical TVC. I already did a Queensryche uh, Tim's Vinyl Confessions, one of my earliest actually, where I went over my vinyl, which wasn't a lot. I'm talking about the albums that have come out from 2013 to the present, and that's only two years ago, but there's been a lot of, there's a lot of music to talk about. Anyone that knows Queensryche's story knows that from 2012 onward, there was a split between Jeff Tate and the rest of Queensryche, who got a new singer named Todd Latore, who sounds a lot like Jeff Tate, but yet has his own sound. Um, there was some litigation, and in 2013, something happened that in all my years of being a music fan has never happened before, may never happen again. Two completely different albums came out in 2013 by a band called Queensryche. <laughs> and... Um, so much to talk about with those two albums. Um, we'll start out with the one that came out first, which would be the Jeff Tate-led version of less a band, more of a studio project, called Queensryche. Um, and I'll start off, the first thing to come out is an album which, well, I'll show you the cover. This is Frequency Unknown. Now you can use your own imagination as to whether the letters F and U mean anything with a fist. It's been speculated. I'm actually opening my copy for the first time, and we'll explain that why in a minute. There are several copies. <clears throat> now this album is a lot less of a Queensryche band album than it is Jeff Tate. I guess there's a core of band members, but there are some guest stars that play a lot of guest guitar solos in this album. They're, um, for instance, K.K. Downing, formerly of Judas Priest, plays in this album. Dave Menachetti from Y&T. Brad Gillis from Night Ranger. Uh, he does have a core band, uh, Randy Gain on keyboards. Jason Slater playing um, on bass. Jason Slater's been involved with Queensryche for quite a while now. Simon Wright, who is his touring drummer. Uh, Paul Bostaff from Slayer actually plays on a bunch of the songs here. And you can see um, most of the players on this album in this sort of group photo. Now, though this album does not sound like Queensryche per se, I think it's quite good. It's, it's a decent record. There's a lot of good songs on there, not maybe the best production, which is why I actually, the version I have, I got a flip CD for this, just for this reason that I've got two copies. Why do I have two copies? Well, because uh, Deadline Records, or Cleopatra Deadline. Records, Resent if we wanted to send in for it and say we didn't like the sound of the first CD that we got, we could send for another one and the remixed version. They um, they did not lie. So yeah, I got a couple of copies. Um, all they required was a proof of purchase, so like a scan of uh, your original barcode or whatever. Yeah. The, and so I kept sending them messages and saying, you know, here I, I have this record and I like the remixed version. Can you send it to me? have this record can you send it to me so <laughs> no less than three times <laughs> that's great I got one copy and I was happy with that uh, the, one of the ver songs that I thought sounded way different was the song uh, give it to you which is actually one of the better songs in the album but there's a vocal ad lib at the beginning of mm -hmm. the <laughs> there's a few slight <laughs> changes <But> now, <laughs> now there's an actual they've They've done a version with the, the proper remastered version that has the same kind of cover, but it's, it's kind of like purplish, purplish yeah. tone to it. And we don't actually own that. Now, I just got this one this year on one of our road trip videos. You'll see this. Matt and I both have this frequency unknown on vinyl. And uh, Matt's going to be so kind now as to... Let's check it out. He's going to actually open up his frequency unknown vinyl. There's one more after we do this. There's one more thing we want to show you that covers the frequency unknown era, which is kind of fun. So. Like I said, it's a, it's, it's a decent album. I will say this, on the CD, um, there are four re-recorded Queensryche songs. He does Eye of, Eyes, of the, Eyes of a Stranger, um, uh, Silent Lucidity, and a couple others, and they're terrible, in my opinion. <laughs> so, I've never actually seen this before, so this is what the... Okay, that's, so here's that's, a, um, that's the same photo... Basically, and that's a, all the songs and the credits. A breakdown of who plays on what. Mm -hmm. The thank yous. And yeah. Very cool. I've got another insert here. It looks like a poster of some kind. Oh. It is a poster, actually. Look at that. 
huge poster. It features performances by members of Quiet Riot, Ozzy Osbourne, White Snake, DL, Blue Oyster Cult, Hurricane, ACDC, Megadeth, Night Ranger, King's X, Judas Priest, YNT, Slayer, Testament, and Forbidden. So, about half of those are Rudy Sarzo. You'd think this was the greatest band of all time. Yeah, you'd think. And then, of course, we have Vile. Vile itself. It's not colored or anything. Nope. But still cool. Basic black. Yeah. Kind of curious that they didn't carry over the um, album cover theme on the label there, but... And that, <clears throat> there's one other piece of vinyl, actually, that Matt has that I don't have. Something now, unheard did, of these they days. They did release a single from Frequency Unknown. And this one is called Cold. And it's backed by the one of the remakes I talked about, uh, Silent Lucidity, Don't Bother. Um, it's really not that good. The, song's, the song, The Cold is good. Silent Lucidity, stick with the original. Um, that's actually limited edition, 500 copies, and he's opening it for the benefit of all to see on TVC. Little by little, he gets the plastic off. So yeah, the tri logo, little of little course. Uh, a little bit different, it's in chains. Ooh! Some blue vinyl. That's pretty cool. Yeah. What's that? I don't know. It looks like uh, an error. Oh. Like a, something that got mixed in the dye one day. Send in a proof of purchase and they'll send you five more. <laughs> Sorry. One more thing. I had to buy this and Matt got it too. I had to get this. They <laughs> put it out on cassette. Now that's the first time I bought a new cassette since probably 1991. And now Matt's going to open his cassette to see if there's actually anything in it. <laughs> I haven't opened a cassette in 20 some years. Here's the frequency I know on cassette. It's a little dark. Yeah, the printing came out quite dark. It looks, like, uh, it looks like an instructional cassette. <laughs> there's no... Uh, there's no song titles written on it. Here's your yeah, smaller version of the credits in the same photo. That's, that's a neat idea. I mean, obviously, uh, I'll give him credit, Jeff Tate, that is. Money was spent, um, not necessarily for promoting the thing, but for replacing copies and putting a cassette copy out. But worth checking out in one form or another. Between the two of us, we've got how many? One, two, three, four. I've got four, so you'd have... I've got three, four... Five, five copies plus the vinyl uh, single, so. so same album. So then the ball was in the court for the, I guess the core band, the Tom Latore led band with three of the original members still intact. And as promised, they, they delivered a self-titled album. Their first EP was self-titled, but they'd never done a full length album self-titled. And in um, sometime in the summer, 2013, this self-titled album came out and uh, Matt and I both ordered this uh, he's got different versions of it. We both ordered this box version of it here. Yep, so Tim's holding the, the boxed edition. I hope you can see that. It's quite dark. Cool cover. With, again, they're using the tri -Rec logo. Same year, same band name. Now, litigation said that that wasn't going to happen again, so I think both sides wanted to get an album out as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. So, inside of this box is a more standard version. Um, with a digipack. See, Matt's got a standard jewel case version of it. This album has um, the distinction of being produced by James Jimbo Barton, who was the engineer for Peter Collins. So Peter Collins, Queensryche fans will know, produced Operation Mindcrime and Empire. So they're two biggest selling albums, great sounding albums. Uh, he also worked with Rush. He produced four of their albums. He produced uh, Alice Cooper's Hey Stupid. He produced of all things these days by Bon Jovi. Um, so, a name that's written on a lot of my album collection. It's a picture of the group inside. This is a fantastic album. If I'm saying the Frequency Unknown is good, this album is great. It's mm. immaculate. Nice return to form. Yeah, immaculately produced, um, just well written songs, memorable songs. This also had some goodies with it, um, a lot of goodies with it actually. I'll show you. This is a uh, Queens right now. This band records for Century Media Records, which is more known for being a thrash, uh, real heavy label. But they uh, spent some money on here. So there's a sticker with the album cover on it. You can perforate that. I'm not going to use that. Um, this is just um, 
an order form for other um, Century Media media. Uh, this is um, three, button pack. three button pack with another you know, little picture of the group, um, a patch, leans right on it, and just a one-sided, uh, well, one picture sided guitar pick. I've been using that guitar pick actually. Okay. I really like the feel of it. It's a, it's a really, really strong, really good album. And actually, I took both Frequency Unknown and the self-titled album. I put them on a CD. Both of them are rather short albums. So yeah, I sequenced so. them so that one played, another played, another played, another played. So you get some strange combinations of song titles. For instance, you've got a world without going into life without you. Sometimes there's just some weird synchronicity with the song titles. Also, um, as I mentioned on Frequency Unknown, Jeff Tate re-recorded some earlier songs. I won't comment Stay anymore about how they are. However, on this, there are um, some live three, I think there are three, live versions of some older Queensryche songs. Yes, there's live versions of Queen of the Reich and Force and Prophecy. And those are all old, old Queensryche songs. And a lot of the fans were... Yeah, just to show you where that band's head is. ...hankering that. for the, the return to the older material, which Jeff Tate wasn't into. But... So that's what Queensryche, the two sides of Queensryche did in 2013. Now, sometime in 2014, the legal battle was decided. Now, obviously, the litigation was such that you couldn't have um, two parties both using the Queensryche brand name. I hate to refer to it that, as that, but that's what it is, and there's power in that brand name. The core band, or the Tom LaTorre-led band with the three original members, won that legal battle to keep the name Queensryche, to record as Queensryche, to promote themselves as Queensryche. Jeff Tate, originally, uh, I think for a short amount of time, he could refer to himself as original singer of Queensryche when he was being billed. Jeff Tate, the original voice of Queensryche. Yeah, yeah. that had to be just like that. Um, you've seen that, I've seen that in other cases, you know, Lou Graham, original singer, Foreigner, and it's, uh, it's all about name recognition. But eventually he picked a name, and I thought it was quite a wise decision, but in, he called himself, or his band, Operation Mindcrime, which it would, probably would have either had to been Operation Mindcrime or Empire. Empire's kind of a generic sounding name for a band. Operation Mindcrime, right away, if you're talking about Queensryche to people, they're like, oh, that's Queensryche. So there's name recognition. He also won the rights to perform both of the Operation uh, Mindcrime albums in their, in their entirety. And I think that's something that the other band can't do. So even though they can still perform some songs from them. I don't think that the Todd Latore led band does anything newer than Promised Land with the exception of their two right. new albums. So anyway, so the first thing that occurred post-2013 as far as music was concerned is that um, the, the core band, uh, following a trend that a lot of other acts have been doing, have basically given the fans the chance to um, Pony up for the recording of the album or whatever project is being worked on. Um, I'm currently waiting. I'm a member of a Kickstarter project for a Y&T documentary, so I'm excited about that. But Queensryche, via Pledge Music, offered the chance to um, pre-order the upcoming Queensryche album, and there are various ways they could do it. I just ordered the basic uh, package. Matt went for something a little bit more elaborate. It was everything from, uh, you could get a phone call from one of the band members, you could uh, have a, like a, a, a dinner a, with them. A dinner with them, but the, the, the ultimate was a part, a owning part of yeah, the, the corporation the of Queensryche yeah, Incorporated. It was, it was like 50 grand or whatever. And yeah, um, very, very interesting, and it was something for every taste and budget, of course. I, I'd be curious as if anybody ever went for that. Now, when that first happened, I thought, great, We'll get a new album any yeah. any month now. Yeah, this was uh, posted around November of 2014. Yeah, it's been almost a year. So the hype behind this, or at least the, the wait and the expectation, we were expecting, originally it was supposed to be uh, sometime in April. So I thought, yeah. great, November, wait until April, get a new record. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. So it, it uh, for whatever reason, it took a little bit longer. So we're waiting on that. Meanwhile, Jeff Tate obviously doesn't care what the other band's doing, so he's working on his first Operation Mindcrime album, and it actually has been out for um, probably close to two months now. It's called The Key. This is supposed to be 
one, the first of a three-part concept album series, which, of course, that's nothing new for Jeff Tate. Uh, surprisingly, he's still using what appears to be the tri -Rike logo. It must be just different enough for him to be able to use it. And on the sticker, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's lists on the bottom, Jeff Tate, original singer of Queensryche. Now, this came out on Frontiers Records. Um, he's still got a lot of the same players as last time, like Randy Gain, Simon Wright, uh, Jason Slater. What do you think of the record? Well, I'll tell you, and I think we both talked about this, the first single to come off it was a song called Reinventing the Future, and I thought it was classic sounding Queensryche. I thought it was quite good. Um, overall, it's okay. It might grow on me, but I don't know. It's very, a lot of it's very slow. I don't want to say slow, like mellow, but heavy, slow, down-tuned. I mean, Tate sounds okay on it. He plays way too much saxophone. I don't like it nearly as much as Frequency Unknown. I don't think I'm going to like it that much, but I got it. Uh, it's going to go in my Queen's Ray collection, and um, maybe it'll make more sense when the next two come out. Mm -hmm. So that's the key. That's the first of, like last time, like 2013, Tate got in there before the rest of the, the other guys did. And uh, we thought that we planned on filming this video that both of us would have received our Pledge Music packages. I haven't yet. I just simply ordered a regular CD. Canada Post brought something from Matt just, just now. Yeah, yeah. Just a, literally a half an hour ago. I received this package. So good timing. It says it's got a CD and vinyl, so I'm assuming this is the Queensryche package. Put her over just here. Slice this open. Hmm. Okay, well there's a little note in here. It says, Dear Queensryche fan, we apologize for the fact that the signed vinyl you are receiving has a damaged cover. Oh, jeez. Blah, blah, blah. We appreciate your continued support, and we'll be sending you a new cover as soon as we receive them. Uh, yours sincerely, Queensryche. Interesting. Now, there have been, I've read on the Pledge Music site, there have been some issues with shipping. and oh. they're, they're shipping out a lot of things all at once. So. Um, look at this now. So here we have the condition... Condition Human CD without the booklet. Booklet. Sans booklet. Hmm. <laughs> a little dark on the back here. Yeah, practically uh, hard to tell what that is. Okay. CD's very dark too. Once again on Century Media, as their last album was. So the unfortunate part about that, I guess, was we were just at a record store a few hours ago. And they, they had it. See, when you support Pledge Music, you're supporting the band. I guess it, it, you have to get it out of your head that you're going to get it first. Yeah, which isn't necessarily the case. So. You're supporting the band, though. There's That's what it's about. Now, this looks Here's cool. the real cool part of this package. Yeah. And really, it's aside from a little crimping here, it's not that bad, but it's, no, it's cool. Actually pretty good it's cool that they're going to send you a replacement vinyl. Maybe they'll send you a booklet, too. Anyway, uh, we were able to download it as well, legally, of course. Pledge Music made it available for a short amount of time. Uh, we both listen to it a lot. We both like it. We're both of just slightly differing opinions on the album. Now, Matt has said that he prefers it to the 2013 release. For the I do. Uh, it's a little longer in length, and uh, I like that we're really now seeing Todd LaTorre stretch his vocal range. There's some really high stuff in, like, uh, the ballad. Um, Number nine, I think it's called Just, Just Us. Just Us, yes. I mean, when the, the intro to that, I didn't even recognize his voice. Yeah, he's not trying quite so hard to sound like Jeff Tate, I get it. And it's a strong album, it's a good album. It just hasn't grown on me like the last one. I thought the last one was, was uh, really, really good. I also thought that the last one had immaculate production on it. I think this one's not quite as crisp production-wise. That's a minor thing. The most important thing is the material. And it's really good. So, look, it might have been ugly for the band, but for us fans, in the last two years, we've had four new albums to dissect and uh, listen to. So, that's been what's going on with Queensryche slash Operation Mindcrime. So, we're just bringing you up to date on that. Thank you for watching Tim's Vinyl Confessions.